convention stuff, I was pretty fanatical about martial arts, even when I was a kid before I even realized it. The um, Roadrunner, Coyote, all that stuff, like the science of it and the mischief is just what always fascinated me. Um, the uh, rooster and the chicken hawk and all that stuff just always really resonated with me. I was completely fanatical about um, Cato. Before I knew he was Bruce Lee, we would put on towels around our necks, and then I could kick, I could kick my cousins in the head. As soon as you had to have the towel to make it real, but ever since I was like that big, it was just something that I had to do. Um, and eventually, once I got a, I went to a trip with my grandfather to Texas when I was 18, and I wound up standing on the land where my father and my grandfather, everyone was from, and it just started speaking to me. And I was barefoot, wearing some dungarees, and I was probably the same way they had always been, on this little old country road, right in the small town where they were all from. And something just made me have to start kicking leaves with my feet. And then, uh, when I came back, I knew I had to study. I had been boxing with some friends in the garage and hitting bags and doing stuff. But as soon as I got back, I, there was something that compelled me. I, needed, I knew I needed to pursue the martial arts. Um, the information. You know, something easy to express. And I'd been completely fanatical, again, about watching Kung Fu on TV. The only night of the week my parents knew where I was. And, uh, it just had such, such, such an impact on me. And for me, it was like church. So, <coughs> excuse me, I really miss David. Yeah. I always feel he was such a cool dude. Everyone thinks it's got to be the saddest thing to be a celebrity because everyone thinks they know who you are. And uh, he's never that. You know, he really was a great friend. And a beautiful, uh, a beautiful soul. Super funny. Extremely um, How mysterious. How did you meet David? I was hired uh, to work with David prior to Lone Wolf McQuaid, the um, Chuck Norris movie back in... Well, it seems like just the other day, but um, <laughs> I'll would say close to 35 years ago. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, and I had been training for eight hours a day under the guy who used to run that show. And so when it came time for David to learn, uh, Master Cam Moon was going to pay her back to school. He goes, Rob, I think you and David are going to get along fine. I want to send you. I was the top guy at the school. And he goes, neither one of you wear shoes. And I can't do a thing with you. I think you guys are going to get along fine. <laughs> and we did. And it was lifetime friendship. And David was had special um, needs. He was always almost heartbroken, and he wasn't Bruce Lee or Jackie Chan or Chuck. And he says, "But he says you got to tell me the truth. I need to know the bottom line. You got to give me the eye of the storm. If you can tell me what it feels like to be a master, I can adjust my eyebrow, and then he could do that on camera. So I became a movement alchemist by taking all of the the Kung Fu suit that I had learned over the decades and decades of training and stepped into kind of a continuum where it all sort of melted. And that's where I discovered just pouring my heart in the high winds, this avenues, and this avenues of, for me, fulfillment, where I was able to express myself wholeheartedly. And it was no longer a cut and paste format. It was no longer Chinese. It was no longer from a family lineage. It was just embracing God at every velocity that I could possibly go through. And I started out as Captain Hook and came out with a Peter Pan attitude and was really able to connect to this. What I didn't know what I was looking for. So it turns out I discovered all this stuff that happens to be uh, ancient secrets, sacred geometry, and uh, whirlpools, wormholes, leaves, seashells, yeah. just about everything. So it works with uh, nature's formula for beauty and strength in motion and in rest. And they get the greatest results with the least amount of effort. Uh, the, the beauty of this is this is actually, uh, we're creators by nature. Even, yeah. even the Bible it tell, it says that. And competitive energy originally was to help each other arise. And we sort of lost a little bit. This is an avenue of self-expansion that creates win-win energy, and you step into creativity. So when I did these videos, people said, you got to make a routine. I'm like, this is the only thing that can't really be a routine. 
So we came up with a few because I was forced into it, kicking and screaming. But the beauty of it, all of a sudden, all these great ideas start to happen. Musicians are using it to find their voice. To, to drummers are, are healing their shoulders. Um, dancers are getting. Um, Tell them about the award-winning um, the Olympian, our friend that just won state championship. Yeah, I have a jiu-jitsu student, and his father asked me, um, you got to help this guy. Well, they know I, I've known his dad for a long time before the kid was born. And so he says, I, you got to help my kid loosen up. He's too stiff. But he was a genius. He was already kind of a jiu-jitsu prodigy. And so I was lucky enough to work with him for about a year and a half. And we're still great. I saw him yesterday. Yeah. And just uh, last weekend, um, uh, he's, he's uh, 15. And he's number one in the world. And he's now um, also the third rated number three in the world. Um, he's 15. I think. Jiu -jitsu. Yeah, in jiu-jitsu. So he's doing like kung fu jitsu. I call this kung fu because I don't know what else to call it. Because that's yeah. kind of where I learned it. But it really isn't. It's nothing like kung fu. But this kid's results were his father says, well, I want it. Well, he thought limber. He thought the kid was going to be, you know, super, super uh, flexible. But he entirely liquefied and that was no longer an issue so by working with rob uh, once a week for about a year, year and, and a half. half he went from really you know cool kid prodigy awesome some work to number one in the world you know state mm -hmm. he, he made state then he he hit the country he's and, preparing him for the olympics and they're now. preparing him for the yeah. olympics and that's without a routine it's with the flow, with the natural flow. Just imagine if you allowed yourself to move with this perfect proportion in whatever area it is without thinking, whatever comes up, that flow and that freedom that comes through in your body. And I, I want you to share why there are different sizes, um, the, one torque versus straight, I think. Well, as a what I'll call myself an active, uh, uh, you know, an alchemist, whatever. I have to keep proof. Once I find something and I say this is the absolute truth, I know I gotta look at it, erase it, carry the two, move it around, and I gotta start retesting myself. And I try to prove myself wrong. Yes, sir. Quick question. Uh, going up the stream, just add how he physically changed. Do you have any examples of someone doing this and it being a emotional or mental change, whether it be you know some aspect of life or business or relationships where they've done this and you know, yes, it's physical, but they also have the yes. The mindset changes. I've seen a lot of people tear up and say that they didn't know what they were looking for, but suddenly they found it by being free, and this was the evidence of that personal growth avenue, where suddenly they were able to just open, and now as a flower, who wasn't able to open? Through the Fibonacci sequence, suddenly they became that rose and that only, I'll get, be a little bit romantic, but even that smell of vibrance of his or their inner being was allowed to unfold in such a way they weren't stumped. And that they were able to take into the business to lighten, to be kinder in traffic, to breathe before they speak, to see that kindness is his greatest strength. And what's the, the, with the time frame of seeing the effects? Even just now we have the immediate I've seen people never get it, and I've seen them transform instantly. It's we really who, will, who's, who allows themselves to dare to be silly. Every time I do a holistic festival, I always have Rob Moses come, and we did one at Robert Kassar's mm -hmm. um, a few years ago, and this woman, um, she was maybe 70. And she'd always tried to meditate. And she said, I just couldn't meditate, I couldn't meditate. And I got the stick. And she moved with it for, um, and she said, I finally know what it feels like to be in a zone without a thought. Um, and she was, you know, an older woman. And she got it instantly. I had also a woman who was uh, pregnant very far along, and she just welled up. Yeah. She, suddenly she was talking to her baby. Yeah, oh, it was so beautiful. And I can't give that testimony, but I was there to cry alongside of her. Yeah. You know, so she was literally 
through holding this, she was cradling her, her inside stomach and that, that fluid encapsulation. Well, how do you say this? I don't even know. Somehow they were both in the womb. Ambionic and they were, yeah, yeah, so there was an embryonic enlightenment sort of thing between the two that she felt something was kind of wrong. And as soon as she got a hold of the stick and started moving, and she moved beautifully, she was able to open herself to connect at a higher level to at that that fractal of divinity. So how much are the sticks? These 40. These are 40. They're 55 online shipped, but so now's the time. And then these are 60. These are all handmade, these things. I have to bake these on a cookie sheet. You know, I've got to cut them, sand them. This is really, really a labor of love. And you were saying that you can feel the energy coming out um, because they're fiber, fiberglass and they transmit. Yeah, they're cool. Like, yeah. So they work like um, fiber um, optics. Fiber optics. And you can, you, can, you can feel that. I don't know what bending light does, but I'm just compelled to continue to do it. Yeah. It feels right. 